today we got a special guest coming into the building with us, man. We got none other than Yetta B, man, and she is one of the top influencers on Bigo Live. Now, some of y'all may not know what Bigo Live is. Y'all like, what the hell is Bigo? What's Bingo? Man, basically what it is, it's a app. It's a live streaming app, man, where a lot of people are tuned in. Sometimes, man, if you actually type it in on YouTube, you'll be able to see it. But we got one of the top influencers on Bigo Live, man. She's got a very interesting story to tell about somebody she actually met on this particular platform y'all and when i tell you the story is absolutely shocking so i want y'all to make sure y'all watch the whole full entire video and i want y'all to give me what y'all think about this whole entire situation let's go ahead and introduce our guest to the show man let's go tell her about your following man tell them how many people that follow you on Bigo live man Okay, um, thanks for having me. First of all, Lionel, I appreciate you. On Bigo, I have about 450,000 fans at this moment. I think 451K now at this point. I've been on the app for a year and a half, and I really started out on Facebook where I also have a large following, um, about 94K on my regular profile, which just got the blue check mark verified on Facebook. Hey. And then on my like page, my fan page on Facebook, I have like 680,000 followers. Um, and then Instagram, 64K. So I, I've been in the social media since AOL, like back, back in the day. I know I might be showing my age, but I don't even care. Um, I love social media, but Bigo, though, it's like the most interactive and lucrative social media that I've come across. So I just, I became obsessed immediately and it's a good obsession to have because you can make money so so if somebody wants to join beagle like um how do they get on beagle live well um you have to download the app first of all and then you're gonna have to become a host if you'd like to be paid monthly like the rest of us who are on beagle's payroll so to become a host you need to find an agency within the app and i am a bigo partner i am an agent my agency is called brown talent agency and lionel is my host he's one of my hosts uh, so you have to sign up on my website browntalentagency.com there is a form to fill out after you watch the little three minute video uh, that kind of breaks down bigo and how it works um just fill out the form and make sure you have whatsapp installed whatsapp is an international app which is why beagle really uses it because it started in singapore over five years ago and there are other countries galore on the app as well so everybody uses whatsapp and then if you fill out that form on browntalentagency.com me or my assistant ellie will be getting back to you within a 24-hour period so so the word on the street is man beagle live like people make a bag on there Kind of tell us a little bit about that as well. Oh, you can make a bag. So the way the app works is you get gifts. People have to spend actual money. Like they have to recharge their credit card to buy diamonds. And diamonds are what you spend to send the gifts. Beans are what you receive. So depending on how many beans you receive throughout the month, that's how much you're going to get paid for that month. There are separate pay tiers, which I do talk about on my website too, browntalentagency.com. Um, there are separate pay tiers that vary from, you know, about $600 all the way up to 24000 So the more fans you get, the more gifts you receive, the more your monthly pay will be. And on top of that, those beans add up to actual cash money too throughout the month. So there's a lot of ways to make money on there. I haven't really even touched on PKs and other challenges where you can get extra beans from the app by just completing these small challenges. So um, it's definitely worth your time if you have time to sit at home and be interacting with people and making friends and being on social media, going live, then Bigo is for you. Because as long as you're a real person, you can make some money on there. You gotta be authentic. It's a whole vibe, so y'all hear that, man. So if y'all haven't checked out Bigo Live, and she already said she got over 400,000 followers on there. So it's definitely uh, on the rise and it's, you know, it's been around for a while. So make sure y'all check that out. So with that being said, let's talk about like the, kind of like the other side of Beagle, um, certain things uh, you've experienced. Specifically, I'm, I remember um, we did have a conversation the other day, kind of like what, what happened with this one particular individual. He's a he's an influencer, uh, influencer on Beagle Live. Let's kind of talk a little bit about him and the backstory behind that. Okay. <clears throat> so I guess I can start with Room 21. So Room 21 is a Facebook group. It's a roast group 
before I joined that group, I was in like thirst trap groups, posting up thirst traps or whatever. So I gained like 60K followers on Facebook before I discovered Room 21. Lotto P created Room 21 to unite LA artists and have parties, but it ended up being a worldwide roast group and it was popping. So I posted up in there, got flamed, and then became admin because I was super active and I, I never roasted people, but I got roasted a lot and I would post things that would make people angry, I guess, and then just like attack me. But whatever, I became admin, made them hate me any, even more. And eventually, Facebook introduced the live feature. A lot of the people in the group, like Mae Thomas, um, Pastor P, um, uh, Savannah Garcia, these are well-known hosts now on Bego. They blew up when Facebook introduced that live feature and they went viral. So Room 21 is to thank for that. And when I got over to Bego, it was about a year and a half ago now. So like March, it was actually March 2nd, 2020, right before everything shut down in LA. I was living in LA. Um, I got over to Pico and I saw this mug, this mug, this mug, everybody from Room 21 was over there. And I was like, damn, none of y'all even thought to tell me about this app, but whatever. I decided to stay away from them because I knew that they were just going to try to, you know, troll me and attack and stuff like usual because that's where they came from, Room 21. So I stayed away from the messy side of Beagle because there's definitely a messy side, okay? So I was just over there in my own little world, hula hooping, singing songs, got the karaoke microphone and my lights and my yoga ball and stuff, and everything was all gravy. But I met TKO Capone this year in January because I was out um, in Atlanta for a Beagle sponsored event. OG Hood Rich is um, out there in Atlanta and he just had become a host. So he has a huge space for like, you know, making uh, movies or videos or whatever. It's like a studio, a huge studio. Um, so he threw this event and a lot of my family members from Icy Bag Zone and Nika, they were all there. So I wanted to go. So I went and I was just hanging out there with my family, my Beagle family, um, the Icy Bags. And TKO was sitting over there in a throne, like OG Hood Rich provided him a, a throne, y'all. And I didn't know who the hell he was, but um, he came up to me and was like, hey, you're beautiful. I just wanted to tell you that. And I was like, oh, thanks. Are you on Beagle? And he's all like, yeah, I'm on Beagle right now. And showed me his phone. And he had like 4,400 people in his room or something. I'm like, damn, who is this? But like I said, I stayed away from the messy side of Beagle, and apparently he was on it. But he seemed really nice or whatever, so I followed him on Bigo. And then, like, once we had both been went back to our respective cities, me and L.A., him in Vegas, we started, like, lining with each other. And I went to his live and got up in his little box once, and he was asking me all about poly. Because I've been poly now for, like, five years. Poly, polyamorous, meaning I believe that I can love more than one person at the same time. I have been in multiple poly relationships where there's been, you know, me, another girl, and a guy me and two other girls and a guy. And it just, um, it never really worked out, but that doesn't mean that I'm giving up on it or whatever. I'm always gonna be poly, even if I end up in a monogamous relationship. So me and him were talking about that, relating to each other. He does music, apparently he's, he thinks of himself as some type of huge rapper. Uh, I ain't never heard of no damn TKO Capone. But anyways, um, he does music, I did music. Um, he had, he wants to buy a big house. And he was thinking either Atlanta or Vegas. And I was like, oh my God, Vegas. Yes, I've been wanting to move to Vegas for like three years. I stayed in LA for seven years straight in Koreatown the entire time, same apartment. And I was like, you know, everybody in LA ends up moving to Vegas. It, if you're from LA, y'all know this. But um, so I was like, oh, I want to move to Vegas. And I want to buy a big house. Like I, even in 2019, I was, or no, it was 2020. I applied for like a a home loan i got approved this shit i was thinking about buying a house out here so it just didn't happen because i didn't want to do it by myself because what the hell do i need a five-bedroom house for with a pool in the backyard all alone so yeah. anyway i was like wow there's a lot of coincidences here he seems really positive he was always preaching like um to meditate in the morning and don't pay attention to negative comments and don't feed into negativity and everybody on the gay side of Beagle should unite with the straight side and we stop hating on each other and like he was like preaching all of this good stuff he was against nature boy i don't know if y'all know who nature boy is but that nigga runs a cult um <laughs> yeah anyway he was against nature boy and i like that you know he he was a whole like revolutionary bego personality that's how he presented himself anyways so i 
uh, went to Maui. I was in Hawaii for like two weeks in February. And that's when me and him really started talking on the phone and stuff. And I just, I'm, I'll admit it, I fell for his ass because he's a manipulator and he knows exactly what to say. And I'm out here in this romantic ass setting. And I was just out there with two other girls. It's not like I was out there on some type of vacation or anything like that. Mm. But um, yeah, we got pretty close. And then I, I cut my trip, trip short by one day so that I could fly back to LA, get some clothes for Atlanta because it was cold. It was February. And then fly back to Atlanta. So I went in January. That's where I met him the first time. I went back in February because he was having his Drip Idol, which is this talent show that he does on Bego in real life in Atlanta at OG Herbert Studio. So I was like, I don't want to miss this. So I showed up there and I was his girl, like his Drip Angel. That's what he calls them, y'all. He has named himself the Drip God and AKA the Drip Messiah. Oh my God. Have you ever dated somebody? And then like later you look back and be like, what the fuck was I thinking? That's how I feel about him now. Like I'm just like rolling my eyes because he's a clown. He's a whole clown. Anyways. um, Yeah. So we were at the drip idol. We was all booed up and everything. Um, We did get into a fight that weekend and I probably should have just cut that shit off right then and there. But I did appreciate the way he handled the fight. We talked it out and we got over it like that same night. So, um, I was like impressed anyways. Mm. Um, he tell he was telling me when we got together that if I was going to be serious and want to be with them, you know, that we need to really put the fucking, you know, move on it. Like, let's go. So how much money can you bring? That's what he was asking me. So, so, wait, so wait a minute. So, so, um, he was basically saying, okay, so y'all about to be into a relationship. So me, him and Armani, the girl who he's been with for the past, like, 14 years unofficially, but they just really became boyfriend and girlfriend like four years ago or something. He was, he would refer to her as his bestie who he liked to, uh, fucking the booty. So, so he basically, um, he basically asked you out by saying, okay, how much can you bring to our relationship? Is that No, we wanted to buy this house. Right. Okay. So he told me if we do this and you're hitting quotas on Bigo, you got your agency. I have an agency obviously on Bigo. So, He's like, we can probably get this house. If we could save up $100,000, we could get a real good house and put that all down on it by like June. So at this point, it's about to be March, right? Mm. So I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we could definitely, you know, make it happen. He's like, okay, so how much do you have now? Like, what could you bring? So I was like, shit. I mean, it depends on how fast I move there, but I could probably have like 20K because I'm making money every month. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But I didn't end up having that whole 20K by the time I moved in. But I also wasn't under the impression that he needed the 20K. He needed it in his own possession. And the way I found out was when we were driving back from L.A. to Vegas with all my stuff. Like, he kind of picked me up um, in a rented SUV, which was not nearly large enough for all my stuff. (laughs) So I had to leave stuff behind and then go back a couple of days later from Vegas to uh, L.A. again. But... On the way down there, he's like, um, so did you get your money out of your bank account? I was like, no, I don't never take my cash out. Like, it's in there. And he's right. like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to need that, right? I was like, why? Like, why do you have to have it? I have it. I came with I got it. You know what I mean? But he was like, nah, that ain't the way I run things. If you my woman, I'm the head of the household, and I'm the one who's in charge of the finances. So whatever we all make is for us, but I'm the one who controls it. And I was like, but okay, but what about like, you know, I don't want my account to look like I don't have no money because I'm a business owner. Like, and plus all my bills come out. He was like, well, we could switch it out. You can switch your, your bills over to my account. And I was like, I'm not really comfortable with that. I want, I, right. want an account. I want an account for us. And he said, that's fine. And he was like, and I never had no account with Armani. I never had an account with anybody else who I was dating. So that means a lot. I'm, 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 I'm telling you, that means a lot that I'm willing to open up a bank account with you. I was like, okay, then bet. So we did do that eventually, but not right away. And when we were, well, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> so the next day we, we went to go to the bank, right? So I could get my money out of my Comerica bank account. Cause that's the business account that I have in, um, in LA, but they don't have no Comericas out here in Vegas. So I didn't know that because I had Googled it before and it looked like they did, but I guess it was like an old result or something because there ain't no Comerica banks out here. 
he got so pissed off. He was like, why didn't you take your money out before you left? See, this is what I'm talking about. And I was like, whoa, like, I don't understand why it's so important for you to have the possession of the money. The money is there. I got the money. Like, what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. So I ended up writing him a check. Um, this was like for $5,500. And before this, I had already zilled him 4K because he needed money to go see his son in Tulsa. And you know what he did with it? He went and rented a, a freaking Corvette from Tor. Uh, what's it called? Uh, that, like, not Uber, but it's like Toro. Is that what it's called? You can, like, reserve exotic cars and stuff. He did that to try to stunt with his son. He spent <laughs> the money on a whole bunch of crap. But the only reason why he said he needed it was because Bigo, Bigo paid us late. Like normally we get paid on the seventh, but we didn't. So um, he was like, I just need this now and I'll give it back to you on Monday. Come Monday. He ain't trying to give none of that back. I was like, okay, well you can just deduct that from the amount that I was supposed to be putting towards the house. And then you put that towards the house. And he was like, okay, yeah, cool. Okay. So I ended up moving with this mug. I wrote him the check for the $5,500 on like day two. Later that night, he went live and um, me and Armani were in the background as usual. We was lit though. We had some drink and she had a four locos, which is all it takes to get her fucked up. And um, we was just vibing. Me and her was more into each other than what he was talking about on live or whatever. And I guess he felt some type of way. I truly believe in my heart that he felt some type of way that me and her were bonding and seemed to be not interested in what he was talking about. Mm. <laughs> because as soon as that live was over, we all went downstairs and TKO backhanded Armani right in front of me. And no. Yes. He did the like was it like the Ike and Tina type like yes damn yeah and I was like I I went and ran up right between them I didn't even know what was going on like I didn't know why he hit her or what it was like almost yeah. immediately after we got down the stairs so oh. she's crying I'm crying he left the house immediately and she snatched off all her press ons and shit and went up to the closet the walk-in closet in there she started put all her stuff in the bag she called her mom. Her mom said that they was going to get her a flight and just get out of the house and go to the airport. And she did. And he finally came back to the house. And um, I was like, Armani's gone. She said she's flying back home to Tulsa. That's where they're from, Tulsa. And I was like, all, oh, all oh, like upset. You know what I mean? Like, well, I ain't never seen nothing like that. I've never been in no fight. I ain't never been in no abusive relationship. I ain't seen my mama get hit, my auntie, my cousin, none of that. So um, when I woke up the next morning, Armani, I texted her and was like, are you okay? And she was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm in the, I'm in the bedroom. I was like, what? Like, so she did, she had, oh, she came back already. She came back while I was asleep oh. and she said she couldn't get no flight out or whatever. And I was like, well, I'm glad you're still here. Cause I was going to go. Like if she was, if she was going to leave, I was definitely going to leave because that went away. I'm not going to, and then the way she picks up after him and stuff, I was like, oh no, this ain't for me. Like, I'm not going to be taking Armani's spot at all. Like, no way. Um, so yeah, she, and, and like, and it's funny too, because you know, boss Barbie. No. Well, she's currently messing with TKO now. Okay. Me and her were pretty good friends because I used to be in her family, the Bunny Ranch on Bigo. Okay. And um, yeah, you know who she is. Mm -hmm. um, so then I texted her because she used to be a hoe, like a real hoe, a prostitute. Mm -hmm. And she knew who TKO was because she lived down here in Vegas for like nine years. And TKO used to be a pimp. Yes. I mm -hmm. forgot to say that. I don't know how I forgot to put that out there. So TKO used to be a pimp. So that's and that's how that's how he knew exactly um what to say because he was a, a straight up pimp. He has studied the manipulation and stuff, and I'm mm -hmm. green as hell, as green as they come. That's what the, I learned that word from him. Green, I'm green, y'all. Mm -hmm. So um, she, she was like so excited when I first got with him because she knows my spirit because we were in the same group and we used to fight a lot. Me and her, she kicked me out of her family three times. <laughs> But after I was finally gone from her family and went back to uh, Icy Bags, we got we got pretty cool, me and her. So when he slapped Armani in front of me, I texted Barbie. And I didn't tell her what happened, but I was like, bitch, Armani is about to leave. I don't know what to do. And she's like, oh, my God. Um, she was like, well, you know, it comes a time where the bottom bitch um, might feel like somebody new has enough to take her spot. And it's just her time to move on. This happens. And... Um, it's just going to be a lot on your shoulders if she does leave. And I said, I'm not cut out for this. <laughs> I ain't nobody bottom, bitch. What? 
<laughs> so yeah, um, it's crazy that she's with him now because she saw everything go down and I was like, I consider her a friend of mine. So I cut her ass off before they were even publicly um, fucking with each other. But I like I texted her and was like, yo, I'm not messing with you no more. Like we can't, we can't because she sat up in his little box for like 45 minutes while he was talking about me. And then she suggested that me and him just have a discussion off the app and we need to talk. And I was like, girl, what kind of friend are you? Why don't you tell him to give me my money back? Right. So, okay. so, so how, so how much did you, uh, did you, did you give to the guy? Total. In cash app, Zill and check seventeen thousand five hundred. Now in dragons, which are bigo gifts, I threw him twenty seven dragons more than he threw me. So, so what does dragons mean? So, for people that may not know what you know what that means in the bigo, a world. dragon is a pretty big gift. It costs about two hundred dollars if you're not um, a host. From me being a host, it's a little cheaper for me because I can convert the gifts that I receive into diamonds so I can send gifts and it's a little bit cheaper that way. Mm -hmm. So for me, each dragon costs $163. So 163 times 27 is another 4,400 or about 4,500. Wow. So there's the, the money, 17,500 and then the dragons, which is another 4,500. So what's that, 22, 22K? Right. right there and then um on top of that there are amazon purchases other credit card purchases oh not to mention i did put them on my credit to try to help build their credit and right. everybody always asks me like so how could you be so dumb mm -hmm. okay i agree it, it i'm was, sure your viewers gonna want to know that they're gonna want to it, it that was person. it was dumb to fall for somebody like that who ain't got no credit uh his girl ain't got no credit they don't own shit they got a three bedroom house. It looked like a trap house. My bed was on the motherfucking floor. So like, yeah, there were a lot of red flags. <laughs> but when you dealing with a narcissist, they are super convincing. And I, another term I learned while messing around with a pimp, an ex pimp is the term love bombing. So they'll like, shower you with all of this affection and love and make you not mad no more and then go back to doing all of the regular shady shit that they do damn so yeah um he knew exactly what to so, say so tell us a little bit about love bombing because everybody may not know what that phrase uh, i'm not no I mean. expert like i said i just learned all this pimp shit okay okay all so right. <laughs> The love bombing, like I said, is when they shower you with praise and affection and even give sometimes and make you feel like you're super, super duper special and better than everybody else. And then they go back to their regular ways and then they give you more love bombs and then they do it again and again and again. It's just like a cycle. So it's basically but, like kind of it sounds like my like my uh, manipulation. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. And, and, you know, if you don't have your defenses, up, I'm pretty sure a lot of people kind of fall for that tactic. Right. So so let's talk about like some of his his weird interests because I know before you said um, there were certain things he liked that was wasn't necessarily normal to most people in terms of like <laughs> using the bathroom you know things like that tell us a little bit about that so he told me he was nasty nasty when I was in Malibu I mean not Malibu Maui when I was in Hawaii mm -hmm. he told me he was real real nasty now I didn't think he meant as nasty as he is. And what I mean by that is he got a doo-doo fetish, okay? He likes doo-doo. What the he, hell? What's the... Okay, all right. I'll let you go ahead and finish. He likes doo-doo. He likes boo-boo, y'all. Like the smell? Like with the, the texture? The smell. He wants it on his thang thang. Okay. So he, he's already very, very vocal about liking anal over vaginal sex. He don't even really care for the pussy at all. Um, so he would much rather do that. And I told him when he told me and he explained this shit, I was like, well, I like pussy sex. Like, I'm going to need that. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> he was like, okay. And I was like, okay. But when he started talking about the boo-boo thing, like, bro, um, he wanted, he wanted to try, he wanted you to like shit on it. Like while he was in there, he would say stuff like try to fart. Um, you should try to push it out. Just push, push. And I'm like, oh, uh, uh. Mm. And he wanted me to sit in white panties and mm. like wait for him to come home while I was like sitting in shit. And I was like, that's not going to be comfortable for me. <laughs> Whoa. 
Yeah. I was like, ah, no. But he also likes like pheromones, he says. So he asked me not to shower before he kind of picked me up from LA to move to Vegas. And y'all, if you don't, if you don't know me now, you motherfucking know I'm not ashamed of stuff that I do. Whatever. He thought he thought I wasn't gonna come out and tell everybody because I was gonna be embarrassed. I don't care. So I had a photo shoot and video shoot for Glamnetics Magnetic Lashes. <laughs> My lashes somewhere. Um, on Sunday, the day the, the week before I moved um, from LA to Vegas. So Sunday, he's he was like, don't take no shower before I come. I was like, I'm taking a shower on Sunday. I'm going to go be around people. So I'm going to take a shower. Right. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I didn't take no shower. He came Wednesday night. Um, he was upset. Because I did not stink. And I was like, well, what the fuck did you expect? I don't even leave my house. Like, what you thought you thought I was going to be all. So he wanted you to smell like sweaty or like what? Like, just I not don't clean? Know, just like, not like so. I guess he wanted body odor. He wanted B.O. Mm -hmm. And you know what I really think? Because he did a bid, y'all. He was in prison for two years. I really think that he was in there fucking on these niggas. And he likes that man stink smell. And he likes it in the ass. And he's weird because he would when we were living together, he was like sneaking to fuck me. And it's like, why are you sneaking right? Armani knows we're in a poly relationship. And Armani's not even gay, y'all. So me and her never did nothing. Especially after I seen her wake up with this cold sore. Well, the morning after he whopped her, that shit sprouted overnight. It was huge. And I was wow. like, oh, I never kiss you. Mm. Um, but yeah, he sneaky. He was like, shh, Armani's gonna hear. I'm like, so? But I think he likes that feeling of sneaking because that's how he had to do in prison. I'm not even, I'm not front with y'all. I really believe that he is either bisexual or all the way gay. He has this brother who has a tattoo of TKO Capone on his body now. Like that's something you do for wow. your bro when they right. did it. That's a RIP right. tattoo. That shit's gay. Yeah. So. It's a questionable, very questionable right now. Period. So he told you that was his brother. He said that, that. he calls him his brother. I, everybody know that's not his real brother. The dude on Beagle now. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and. and he's living there with TKO and Armani. And I heard some other nigga just got out of prison and she, he's living there now too. So they got this three bedroom, empty ass, no furniture house with TKO, Armani, they two dogs, and now these two felons. <laughs> So in, in, in terms of who he is on um, Bego, does he make like good money? Like why are they living like in such So last month condition? he was number one on the whole app, y'all. Wow. I do not understand how so many people can sit up here and listen to me talk and then choose to think I'm a liar and TKO is God. They be giving him gifts. It's crazy to me. And you know who it's mostly old, miserable, bitter women. Mm -hmm. It's true. So, so from there, okay, so after all this stuff transpired and he, he won, you know, he having certain requests from you. So what happened with y'all? Like, where did, where did the breakup come from? Okay, so basically right at the beginning, he told me he wanted to uh, use my credit to get a Bentley. And I was like, no, <laughs> I don't want a Bentley. And also what happened? Well, no, the money's supposed to be for a house, right? Mm. And he's like talking about he got these dreams of doing a far foreign car rental business and stuff. And I was like, nah, that's not what I signed up for. It. Um, so it pissed me off. And then I was like, well, if we're gonna be using this money for other stuff, why don't we pay my credit card bills down then? Because I did run them up a little bit when I was in Hawaii, and then I went to Atlanta like right after that too. Mm. So I mean, I had some a little bit of debt on them credit cards, and he was like, no, we're not gonna use the money that and I was like but if y'all are on my credit and y'all trying to build credit do you understand how credit works like you can't have a large balance just sitting there on your credit because it's going to make your score go down so why don't we just go ahead and use the money that I've already given you to pay the credit cards and then we can keep using them instead of your debit card which has all the money and then we can build the credit you know just that's how it works Mm. He didn't want to do my suggestions. And he would tell me things like, it's the way you say things. It's the way you bring up to me. So he wants everything to feel like it's his idea or it's a bad idea. And he don't want me to feel like I'm running shit. So he's not going to say yes and do it my way, no matter how much sense it makes. So we fought a lot. We fought a lot. 
throughout the whole relationship. And this was behind the scenes of Beagle. And they don't know. Beagle didn't know I was giving him all my money. And that's how I, another thing, I didn't realize that he wanted the money every time I got paid. He wanted that money. And I'm like, for real? So I don't get to keep none of my own shit? What? And he's like, if you're not down with the program, then you could go. Um, at this point, I done left L.A. I done left all my shit, basically. Um, I went back for more stuff, but only enough to fit in that um, that Malibu that they was renting. They was rent renting their car, paying for it every Friday, y'all. When I found that out, as soon as I moved in, I said, what the fuck? Why? That's, wait, so, Why? So, so, so where are they, all their money going, you know what I'm saying, going to? Because they, if they're making a good amount of money, why are they, like, well, living like that? Like, renting vehicles? I don't know. Shit, like it, it's like it he lives on the model to like fake it till you make it so he don't care that his house is empty and decrepit and sad and they don't got no coffee table no kitchen table no chairs other than these plastic bar stools and the chair that i bought his ass is sitting in that studio that gaming chair is mine and they don't got no silverware drawer they don't got a lot of stuff that normal people have and no, it's, silverware drawer. everybody got a silverware drawer okay, they don't I mean. cook. all they do is postmates and go out to eat they don't mm. cook nothing they eat with plastic utensils that come with the to-go orders yeah. Armani don't cook nothing. They eat like crap. And that's another thing, too, that we didn't even get into. I, I came there with a whole list of things that I wanted to improve about myself, including losing weight. And I gave it to him because on some like, OK, you want to be daddy, be daddy for real. Like on some BDSM, I'll be your sub. You be my daddy. But you got to be, you know, like on my head. Make sure I'm doing the things that I want to do to accomplish what I want to accomplish, because that is the role of a daddy. But he is not no daddy. That nigga, is, he ain't no daddy at all. He don't take care of business. He's irresponsible as hell. He don't hold himself accountable. So how can he hold me accountable? There were times where um, he wanted to go get some uh, Oreo shakes and stuff. And he would ask me if I want to. And I'm like, no, nah, we're supposed to be eating healthy. I'm not going with y'all to IHOP. No, don't bring me nothing back. No, I don't want to go to Olive Garden today. No, I'm going to eat the stuff that I cooked. Because I was the only one who would cook anything up in there. And did they want to eat my food? Hell no. They so weird. They was childish as hell. So the reason why we broke up eventually was because ultimately the they eating habits is what triggered it. So it's my birthday, right? Mm -hmm. April 23rd. I moved in that house March 18th. By April 23rd, I was already done with that. I was so sick of them. Whoa. um because of this so for my birthday they asked, he asked me whatever i want to do go ahead and plan it book it whatever he gave me the debit card so i i reserved a suite and um the cosmopolitan and i like i got a good one it was it was nice or whatever it was like 1200 because my friend works there and i got a discount through her yeah. um where we were supposed to go to dinner and i had made reservations at morton's steakhouse but then I looked at the menu and I saw the prices and nothing was really below 30, which is not that bad. But I knew they wasn't they weren't going to like any of it. So we was just going to waste our money because they don't have chicken tenders there. They don't have no burgers and fries. Like, not chicken tenders, bro. <laughs> you ask her what her favorite food is. She says chicken tenders and fries as a grown ass 32 wow. year old woman. That is her favorite food. So I know this because I had spent enough time with them to see how freaking annoying they are. And I used to work in the restaurant industry before COVID, y'all, for 14 years, bartending and serving. I know how irritating people like them are. He always need extra ranch. If they go to IHOP, he need a lot of hot syrup. And I mean hot and grape jelly. And he puts the syrup on everything and the jelly on everything, even the eggs. Nah, and he, he needs that shit now or and if the breakfast gets cold while the, the uh, hot syrup is coming he don't want that no more they gotta redo it then they want the check as soon as they didn't ate like five bites uh, we, we go ahead and get the check they don't finish their food they leave a bunch of it they just terrible but anyway um i knew they weren't gonna like anything on morton steakhouse menu so i canceled the reservation without even talking to them first and said where do y'all want to go Armani suggests Red Lobster. So for my birthday, we went to Red Lobster, guys. Um, their favorite restaurant is Olive Garden. <laughs> so it doesn't <laughs> surprise me because they're owned by the same company. I used to work for Olive Garden. I was a bartender, server, and trainer for three years. Um, so we went to Red Lobster, and I, we got all dressed up. And Armani bought me a Fashion Nova dress to wear for my birthday. No shade. The dress was cute as fuck. But that ain't a really good birthday gift. He got me... Two portraits, one of me and one of me and him, and neither one of them really looked that good. And I was like, "Oh my god, thanks!" So, so that, so, was, that was his birthday gift to you, like some pictures and shit. Yes, 
Whoa. Not no. Oh, he renamed me Chanel, and he wanted me, he wanted me to be called Chanel because there was already Armani. Her name Desiree for real, but he called her Armani because it's designer, and he felt like it would be cute for me to be Chanel because that's designer too. Even though I don't own a lick of Chanel or any other designer because I don't give a fuck about that at all. I'm dumb like uh, a Walmart type of bitch. Not that at all. I think it's a waste of money. Um, so you think that maybe he would get me something Chanel for my birthday, especially since I've given him, you know, $17,500. But no, two portraits. And if y'all have seen a house, they only artwork in there is portraits of either just TKO or just Armani or the both of them. And they look tacky as hell. You can walk in, you can walk in their house and know that they're narcissists. Well, he's the narcissist. Cause like, bro, who has pictures of themselves in every, every room? Like, that's crazy. Yeah. I don't have no pictures of me up, period, in my house. Like, that's just ooh, cringy. But, um, yeah, so that was my birthday gifts from them. And then we were at Red Lobster, right? I ordered the surf and turf. So I got steak, I got lobster tail, and um, some bacon-wrapped scallops on my plate. Everything was bomb. I'm not going to lie. Red Lobster be hitting. And it was a long time since I had been there, too. So it was good. But... One of the things that we argued about was how they don't never try new things, right? So they both agreed that they would start to try new things. Um, so I asked Armani first. I was like, oh, my God, this bacon ram scallop is so good. Like, you're going to try one? She's like, oh, there's bacon on it. And I was like, oh, yeah, you don't like bacon. Not that she don't eat pork. She do. But she just doesn't <laughs> like bacon. Who doesn't Damn. like bacon? What is wrong with you? And I asked her, what about turkey bacon one time? She was like, that's still bacon. I was like, girl, it don't taste <laughs> nothing like bacon. She's a freaking idiot. So, yes, yeah, she's dumb. They're both dumb. Um, so I asked him to taste it, and he's on live at my birthday dinner on his own phone. He's on his own live. Went at his birthday dinner back in March um, at Olive Garden. I threw him a yacht. I'm sitting here in his live while he acting like a little spoiled brat and threw him a luxury yacht. And for those of y'all who don't know, that's four dragons in one gift. That is expensive. That's like an $800 gift. Mm. So I sent him that on his birthday and on my birthday, he on his own stream trying to get his own gifts on my motherfucking birthday at my birthday dinner. Wow. Um, so yeah, he wouldn't taste it. He starts throwing a fit to all the people in his room, telling them to, that she's trying to make me eat bacon. Y'all know I don't eat pork. When meanwhile, earlier that day at IHOP, he had bacon. We always eat bacon. Like, what are you talking about? And people just believe everything. Yeah, leave him alone. Why are you trying to force him to eat stuff? I don't like things like that either. I'm a picky eater too. Blah, 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 blah. The people in the comments. So I got real mad that he wasn't going to eat it. And I'm sitting here looking at him like, is this really who I chose? Is this really... Is this really going to be the rest of my life dealing with these childish ass motherfucking basic ass niggas? So I was like done, done for. Like I was already over it at that restaurant. So when we left, finally, we in a car and I'm snapping because he's still live. He's driving. He's still live. I'm looking at the comments from the back seat, yelling at everybody who's saying some shit, um, snapping <laughs> left and right or whatever. So he eventually snapped back at me talking about some um don't say nothing else. I better not hear no more words out of you. No, 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 just shut up or some shit like that. So I ain't say nothing. And then when we got to the hotel, he told me and Armani to get out. And he said, he's like, I'm not coming. I'm not coming upstairs. He went back home and continued to be on his stream and let, let women come up in the box and talk shit about me all night. Like he thought that she was going to ruin my birthday. Hell no. We got up in the room. I told Armani off. She, cause she was like, I just think you should learn how to control yourself because when you go back and forth with him, it makes us look bad as a unit. I said, bitch, I'm not going to be fake like you. I can't. And she got mad because I called her fake. So she called an Uber and went home too. And I had my bestie come over and three other people from Bego. And we had a sing along all night. We got drunk. We had a good time. We was on live the entire time. And I know he was over there pissed off because he thought I was going to be all, oh, my boyfriend isn't here on my birthday. I don't care. I was already done with him for real. Mm -hmm. Um. So the next morning, I, I slept, slept there by myself while my friends left or whatever. The next morning, he texted me talking about something. Don't go nowhere. Uh, me and Armani coming over and I got to talk to you. So I'm like, well, what time is it going to be? Because I'm trying to go to the pool. And he told me it would be like around one. He was late as fuck. When he gets there, he's all, he's angry as hell, shaking and stuff. And he sits down and he's, 
offering me this ultimatum telling me that if I wanted to stay in this relationship, that things were going to have to change. And I was going to have to publicly apologize on Beagle to him and Armani for calling them childish and basic as far as their eating habits go. And I was like, but I'm not sorry. And he was like, well, you're going to, you're going to have to apologize for that. And you're going to have to follow my strict regimen for two weeks straight. Whoa. Where you have to wake up at a certain time and say your meditation and all your affirmations and um, and make sure you read two chapters out of a book a day and go to the gym and eat right. No alcohol. Da, 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 da. I'm like, nigga, that's what I asked you for from the get go. And you couldn't even hold me accountable for that. Like I told him I wanted to improve spiritually, physically. I wanted to not drink as much. I wanted to lose this much weight. Like um, all of that. So like, why are you trying to come bring that shit to me now? You had your chance and you proved that you ain't no leader. So, and then the other option was I could leave. And I was like, well, I don't even really need to hear no more details. I'll pick the other option. I'm ready to go. And he was like, all right, bet. He gets up and starts taking my stuff out of the duffel bag that I used for the hotel weekend. And it was his duffel bag. And I was like, whoa, what are you doing? So I can't use your bag now? And he was like, yeah, you're not my girl no more. You don't get these privileges. You're not my woman. You're not my woman. I was like, are you for real? So he rushed out of there, him and Armani. And I called my girl, Ashley. And she came over and brought me a bag to put all my stuff in. And then she took me to the house. So this nigga wouldn't let me in the house, y'all. When we got there, he told me I wasn't coming inside. And I'm like, my cat is in there. And all my stuff is in there. And I don't even have a bra. Like, I forgot to bring a bra, y'all. I had um, my swimsuit and then, like, this Mrs. Kisses strapless backless bra. That's what I wore with my dress when we had went out but i didn't have no regular ass bra no no more extra clothes or nothing i'm like why are you not gonna let me in the house i couldn't believe it and um he was like no i'm not letting you in and uh, i'm live and and he's live we but we get in it's all on bigo i told him because i had to piss by the time we got to the house i had to piss i thought i was like i'm gonna piss on your porch <laughs> and <laughs> he was like do whatever you gotta do and close the door in my face and i immediately squatted i'm, I'm on live like this Pissing on this motherfucker no. uh, porch right there. Yeah. <laughs> and it's on YouTube. Y'all can find it. Oh, um, man. I did not give a fuck. I'll do it again. And then he comes out. He comes back outside. Y'all, she really pissing. She really pissing. And like showing my bare naked ass. And I was like, yeah, fuck you. I give him a finger and everything. I said, I hope you get banned. I hope you get banned. Because you're not allowed to show like no naked nothing on, on there. It's like, well, you going to show me pissing? I told your ass I had to piss. You going to let me in the house? So... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, he called the freaking cops, y'all. And I was like, okay, call them, call them. And I sat there on the ground and waited for the police to come. And then I told they was like, Oh, we've been here before. Soon as they mm. soon as they got out the car, the lady cop was like, Oh, I, I, we've been here before. I said, I bet y'all have. <laughs> so um they let let me in the house and watch me while I collected my stuff. The female officer told me to take anything that I might need to prove that I was living there, mail that I received, and I definitely had that as my permanent address. Um, like, all types of shit. She had me fill out a police report on him from weeks before when he threw a protein shake in my face while yeah. we were driving. He was in the, uh, the driver's seat. I was in the passenger seat. He got mad at me because I told him it was a man's job for him to help me put together my dresser. Cause he starts yelling at me talking about something. Well, you should have never bought that dresser anyway, if you could put it together. And it's not my fault. I came to a room with no furniture, but so, uh, so he didn't even want to help you put the, uh, assemble your dresser and none of that. Nope. He didn't want to help me assemble my dresser. Wow. And like the day that we, he threw that shake in my face, I had friends in town and I wanted to go to the Mandalay Bay and swim with them. They had a cabana. Um, he said he wasn't comfortable with me going hang around a bunch of niggas because it was a, a guy's trip, and these were kids from like friends from college for me. Mm. Um, I was like, Well, why don't you just come with me? You're invited, like, both of y'all can come. He was like, Well, I don't want to be rushed, and I was like, What do you mean? We was leaving the gym. I was like, Just take a shower, put your swim trunks on, and let's go. And he was like, No, nah, it's not that simple, and I'm not gonna have you dictating how I'm gonna run my day. Just get over it. We're not going. You can maybe see them later tonight. And I was just all like, <sighs> You know, like, because I felt like he was just being difficult for no reason, just to say no. And I was like, Well, can you at least help me put together my dresser then when we get home? And he was like, Well, I don't know why you bought that dresser anyway. You can put it together yourself. You should have never bought it. I hire people to do things like this. And I was like, It's a man's job. And then, he threw that hole. We had just went to um protein house. 20 ounce 
chocolate chip shake at me it exploded everywhere all over the ceiling the wall and everything and i'm like ah, oh my god like screaming i got out of the car in the middle of the street we was right in front of the house he was just about to pull into the driveway so i got out of the car screaming and shit armani got out he pulls off down the street which has speed bumps just flying over the speed bumps and then turn the car around and start gunning it back at us and so I ran out the street thinking he about to run us over. And then he just stopped the car right in the middle of the street, gets out of the car, leaves the door open and everything. He just coming for me. So I'm backpedaling and I'm trying to stay in sight of all the neighbors and stuff. I didn't want to go in the house. So I'm like backpedaling, trying to get away from him. And he tried to snatch this water bottle out of my hand, but I had my finger in the loop. So he couldn't get it. I don't know what he was going to do. What are you going to try to throw this little heavy, you know, metal hydro flask at me? I don't know what he was doing. He looked crazy. So I just kept like trying to back away from him and like avoid him. And then he went into the house finally. And I got in the car. I took a little video of, of all of the, the mess in my face. And then um, Armani finally calmed me down. She was calm the entire time. I'm sure she's used to seeing his fits of rage. Um, and I ended up going back in the house, taking a shower. I got me a U-Haul. I hired two movers. I told Armani I'm taking an Uber to the U-Haul. I'll be back with the movers. And I did that. He was shocked as hell. Um, he told the movers to leave while I was still trying to get them to pack my stuff and load it up into the, the van that I rented. And he was all like, baby, 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 I'm sorry. No, 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 You know, this will never happen again. And he was trying, trying, trying. And I ended up calling my girl Kyra. She came over to help me finish packing and loading up that van. And then I was trying to find a, um, I was trying to find a, an Airbnb to take me and my cat for the night. And I couldn't. So I ended up just spending the night at my friend's hotel. The, the guys who were in town, I spent the night over there. I left. And I left my cat there overnight because he offered since I couldn't find nowhere to take him. All my stuff was in the van. He was like, you can just come pick Bobby up in the morning. So, of course, when I come to get my cat in the morning, we talked and he talked me out of it. And him, Armani, was, like, Armani was like, ah, you're the, you're the best like girl that's ever been here. And I really bonded with you. And I never bonded with any of the other girls. And I don't want you to leave and blah, 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 blah. So I stayed and he ended up calling the movers back to come take all the stuff out of the car. But I really like, I was still iffy, but I had already invested like over $10,000 by that time. It right. was, only, it was only 10 days in. So I'm thinking like, he not going to give me none of my money back. I asked him too. I was like, can you at least give me Oh, back? so all, all of this happened within 10 days of you being there? Yeah. Ooh. On the 10th day was when he threw that shake. So um, I really did try. Like, I really did like him and Armani. Um, we had some really good times when he wasn't in a bad mood. He was really fun to be around. We was cuddly as fuck. Um, we had good chemistry. We could have did a lot more. We made some tracks together while I was living there. Um, but he is just absolutely childish. Like, he can't control himself. He can't control himself when it comes to food, anger. He be drinking lean and shit and think that that's cool, but got a problem with me with whiskey and coke. Like, bro, mm -hmm. well, um, he always want to do fentermine, the diet pills. He told me before I got there that I was going to have to take those pills too. And Armani's the one with the prescription. So I took them a few times. And then sometimes he'll ask me, did you take your pill today? And I'm like, no, not today. I don't want to take them shits every day. And plus it didn't make me feel like it made them feel. They always was like, oh, the pill make you feel so, you know, alive and creative and inspired and all like nah for me it just made me know so they was so they was abusing diet pills like they got high yes, diet and pills. he still do and he has a whole insecurity about his man boobs because he used to be like hella fat so now he's that he's lost weight his titties be sagging and stuff everybody always make fun of him and it was crazy is on my birthday like i just wanted to go swimming that's why i got the suite at the cosmo i just really wanted to go swimming god damn it I'm in my bikini swimming around, having a good time. This nigga gets in the pool with a whole Bulls jersey on. <laughs> he He's so embarrassed by his chest. And then what's crazy, the, the gag is, he was holding my phone while I was swimming around. He, he on my live, on my phone, talking to my fans, telling them, uh, look at my little whale and calling me SpongeBob and shit while I'm spent swimming around confident as could be in a bikini with my big ass. And meanwhile, he's he's clowning his girlfriend. To me, that sounds like jealous bitch behavior. Like, you jealous of me, bro? Is this a competition with you? Is this why you act like this? And I truly believe that. He wants to be a confident, beautiful woman. <laughs> Damn. So, 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 fa so fast forward to 
um, okay, he he kind of you know he was able to finesse you back into there. At what point were you like, okay, this is this is a wrap? Because I know you said you you know at that dinner. At that dinner, okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure he felt it too. Like I was like, I'm over it. And like, it was just, it was insane. Like he called the police on me and stuff. It's like, bro, you used to be a pimp. You, he always would claim that he used to pimp and he's not about that life no more. And he turned his life around. He got out of jail and he got spiritual and he do meditations and stuff. No, he's just trying to do it in a legal way now. So he's calling it poly and he's still like pandering. He's still demanding women's money and he would tell me baby you're not giving me no time i promise i got you you're not even letting me prove this to you yet baby like it's only been three weeks and you still tripping off the credit i swear i'm gonna pay your credit card bills i swear you ain't gonna go for nothing go without anything that you need and i'm like okay all right i'm gonna give you a chance like i did nothing but try to help them both of them I, they, they don't do their taxes i was like we're gonna have to figure that out Armani couldn't get no bank account because she owed Bank of America. I said, well, we're going to have to get on the phone with Bank of America. Uh, he, he got all excited about the PPP loans. I said, baby, no, we're not going to do no PPP loan because you're going to have to pay it back unless you use it to pay employees and we don't have a business. Right. <laughs> That's fair time right there. I tried to help them in so many ways and for him to call the police on me and then the next day put all my shit in storage without my permission. That's illegal. He illegally evicted me from that house and then took my stuff and put it in storage, broke my stuff. My TV was broken. The dresser that I, um, we, he finally helped me put it together after he threw that shake in my, in my face. Um, the dresser fell apart. Like he kept my stereo. Like a lot of stuff wasn't in there. So then when he tried to meet up with me to give me the rest of my stuff, like my stereo, I had a red leather jacket, all my tools, um, my, my power extension cords. It's like, damn, you just gonna keep all the stuff that you can use yourself. Um, so he met up with me. He, he said, he offered to meet up with me mm. to give me my stuff. So I was like, well, I want to go to Hobby Lobby today. So you come to this Hobby Lobby over here. So I met him in a parking lot and he said he wanted to rap with me about some stuff anyway. So I get in his car, I'm like what? And he said he wanted to talk about the song Vacation that we wrote together. And I'm like, no, like we can't be cool and do music or whatever. I fucking hate you. And he couldn't understand why I was so mad. And I was like, how, how do you think it's a good thing? It's fair for you to keep $17,500 when I was living there for five weeks. He's like, well, you were supposed to stay. See, that money was for us in the future. And that's why you, you should have stayed because then you would, see, you would see the benefits of your investment if you would have stayed, but you chose to leave. I'm like, so? Like, what does that have to do with what's right and what's wrong? And he was like, it wasn't no $17,000. And I was like, you want to see the receipts, my nigga? So I pulled it all up. I showed him. I was like, okay, do the math. You add these up. And I'm showing him the cash apps and I'm showing him the Zells. And I was like, no, you, you should definitely give me at least at least 12,000 back. I was like, so, cause if I stayed there for five weeks and I spent $5,500, I could have paid y'all rent, pay for all the food we ate, all the clothes you bought during the month that I was there, everything and then some. So how would that not be fair? And he's all like, nah, nah, nah. And he was trying to kiss on me and tell me to look him in his eyes and that he loves me and stuff. And I'm like, no, stop, get off me. Like, no. And what was the final straw? Cause I, I yelled at him for like 10 minutes. Um, he, he gonna suggest, well, you know, maybe we could just, you know, go in and just relieve a little tension. And I said, what? <laughs> and he was like, I mean, you know, it's like we, both of us are kind of stressed out. It's a lot of stuff built up. So maybe we should just go ahead and try to, you know, let some of that energy out. I said, are you suggesting that we, that we fuck? I said, I'm <laughs> done. I'm going in the store. I'm out of here. And I just got out of the car and went in Hobby Lobby. That's the last time I seen him. Man. So apparently, you know, initially you was you was pretty dumb to kind of fall into the traps, but something made you kind of be like, okay, I'm not on that type of time no more. So what what made you kind of gather your strength in that car at that particular time and be like, no, I'm not falling for the for the BS again? After he called the police on me and moved all my shit and tried to embarrass me, I chose to leave the whole situation. And he wanted to look like he was the powerful one who put me out. He wanted he wanted me ass out. He wanted me to struggle. He wanted me to, to come back. He wanted me to like, oh, I need you. I don't have anything. You have all my money. Luckily for me, I had just cashed out on Vigo. So after a couple of days, my stuff hit my bank account. So I had 5000 
whenever I when I whenever I left. So I only stayed with my girl Ashley for five days before I apply. I had already applied for an apartment here in her complex, which is where I live now. I got approved because I do my taxes and claim my income on Bigo. <laughs> so I got a two bedroom, two bathroom, and I, I left there. My my birthday was the twenty third. The 24th was when he came to the hotel and gave me that ultimatum. I signed this lease and moved in on April 30th. And I also went and bought a car the same day. So he thought he was going to have me out here embarrassed and homeless and struggling. And it didn't happen uh, at all. So, uh, you know, of course, there's going to be a lot of people, um, you know, watching this interview with us and all that, man. So, like, what do you want to kind of... Um, Say to the young women that may be in that particular type of situation um, that you're in, it or may get coerced or traffic oh, around it, and they may not even know what's going on. It happens a lot. I've gotten so many messages, like in my uh, message request on Insta and in my Beagle and even in my email, uh, women thanking me for telling my story because it's giving them the courage to leave their situations. So um, my advice would be like, listen to the red flags. I know we, we all out here, you know, hoping that somebody can be what they say they are. Don't fall for the bullshit. If you see them red flags, baby, run, because you're just going to waste your time. I'm glad that I, it only took five weeks for me, you know, to get yeah. about that house. But um, yeah, my advice is to just like, listen to your intuition for real. Because if, if somebody's showing you their true colors, you need to believe them. And run, baby. But yeah, so like, there was definitely a lot of uh, uh, red flags. I mean, in terms of just his his preference yeah. on on certain things, or yeah, or how he wanted it. I mean, did that kind of throw you off where he, where he was requesting? Yes, but I've also or... um I've been around the block, honey. I ain't trying to call myself a hoe, but I like oh. I like to get down. So okay. I've dealt with a, a wide variety and these niggas out here is weird. So it's, he's not the only weirdo. That's just his weird thing. So I'm like, okay, um, I guess I could deal with it. But um, I mean, he didn't ever ask me not to shower again after that first time, especially when he was so disappointed that I didn't stink. He was like, damn, I thought, you know, being a bigger girl that you might. I was like, no, <laughs> sorry. But um, yeah, no, I, I didn't dealt with some real weird requests. Before. So you never questioned him on why he liked what he liked. He just no, I asked him it. where does it come from. He don't know. That's what he said. He don't know. It's just what he liked. And I kind of admired that in a man to be like, hey, this is what I like, and I'm comfortable and confident or whatever. This is what it, mm -hmm. this, is, this is what it is. So I mean, I I couldn't shade him for that. But you know, and learning from the situation, I I would never deal with some type of weird ass quest like that again i'll be like i'm no. not for you because i'm not comfortable with that like i don't want to do that it's not fun. Yeah, i was going to ask you were you, were you just a team player so your next man just you know whatever his request is you're gonna are you gonna just kind of go with it or are you gonna no i said i had some fun. weird requests and i didn't do them either i feel you i'll learn a lesson or two with this mug like for real but he's kicking himself now he heard my new diss track on charlie and came in my room on Bigo dropping flame emojis and I was like nigga shit ain't sweet I don't like you I don't fuck with you and he was like well you know you get on my nerves but I can't I can't deny you got some real talent or some shit like that in the comments and I started snapping on him I was like yeah you could have had uh you could have remained cool with me we could have worked something out but instead you had to throw a temp a temper tantrum like a little child and try to embarrass me and I was like I was the best thing that ever happened to you and ever will happen to you I let him have it I was like, I was a damn good girlfriend talking about something. Uh, I can't stand you. You can't stand me. I was like, I never did nothing bad to you. It kind of sounds like, based on what you're saying, it kind of sounds like you you forgiving him a little bit, a little low-key, that you're not, you're not really all that mad to where there may, like, you kind of like, you sound like you're kind of opening the door just a little bit for him to kind of slide back in. I don't want him sliding nowhere. I want him to give me my money. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> he he tried to get me to come host the drip, drip idol. He sent his little minions over to my live on Tuesday, and mm. he they like TKO wants you to come judge. He wants you to come judge the drip idol. I said hell fucking no. I know y'all better tell him to cash at me fifteen G's right now, and I'll end my live and come over there and judge. I was like no, like he really he really thinks shit could be sweet, and, and I got another thing coming for him. Like no, no, absolutely not. But 
If he did give me back at least 15 grand, we could still do music. I will never fuck him again. I will never be in a relationship with that nigga. You know why? Because he don't have shit to offer me. I only learned about pimp shit fucking with him. And that's not something I never, I never cared to learn about pimp shit. You know, like I would have rather skip that whole thing, the, the whole Chanel phase. And like everybody was saying it, I was just there with him for clout. I never heard of him before. And guess what? I have hella outside social media following. And guess what? I never changed my name to Chanel, none of those places, nor did I ever post a picture of him or Armani. Nobody in my real following outside of Bigo has ever heard of no goddamn TKO Capone and me being with them. Only the people on Bigo saw that. So, so it sounds like you didn't know you was in a pimping situation. So you didn't like even when you was experiencing, you didn't know that, you know, what I'm saying he was your pimp at the time. Right. He can't be considered a pimp if I'm not out here hoeing. Okay. So he's not a pimp. He was not my pimp. He just got pimp waves and he's a pandering, a pandering ass. nigga. Like that's what he's doing. He's taking advantage of women. And making it seem like it's a relationship and that they're all going to benefit from this investment. He promises everybody a house. And now he's promising a reality show. So he's on Bego looking for more drip angels. He even had drip angel auditions. And that's where I was outraged. And I started really, I started really kicking up a bust when I saw him on Bego doing drip angel auditions. And he had a panel full of women asking these women, what's your credit score? Do you have a 401k? Would you write TKO into your will? Do you own any properties? Do you own your vehicle? Asking all these questions to set them up for failure. Set them up to get got. So I was I was pissed. And I started talking about his ass every day. And it worked. He's canceled the show. Um, the girls who were judging for him decided they wasn't finna sit on that panel no more. I had a lot of people coming to me about their abusive relationships. I had a Somebody come out, Island Girl came out and told us all that she has a 13 and a half year old son by TKO because she used to be a hoe for him and he beat her damn near dead and then dropped her off at the hospital where they dragged her up to the ER door and they came um, and picked her up and she was just completely fucked up and her husband, she was married, came from Miami to get her and then took her home and raised a baby as their own. Raised TK wow. as her own. Her story is on YouTube too. If you search for Yetta Island Girl interview, because she she wanted to tell her story on my on my platform. So yeah, hey, that is amazing, man. Y'all gotta be careful, y'all. Y'all ladies, be careful. Men, y'all be careful too. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a lot of uh you know manipulators in the world, man. So y'all definitely take care of yourself, man. It's crazy. Yetta, we thank you so much for coming on the panel and um actually sharing your story, man. I know. Hopefully it can touch some people out there just probably going through the same thing. And um and thank you for being so honest about everything that you uh experienced. Of course. And y'all can find me on Bigo, Instagram, Yetta Brown Baby. Search for Yetta Joe Brown on Facebook. That's my verified page. And Yetta Brown Baby is the the like page too. So y'all follow, subscribe on my YouTube too. Yetta Brown. All right, man. Y'all follow the homie, man. Yeah, the Brown on there, man. She's doing big things on Big O Live, y'all. So y'all already know what I'm going to say, man. Y'all make sure you don't, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on the videos. Share these videos. And I'm going to peep y'all on the next one. Holla.